seated. We're thankful here at First United Methodist Church Longview to host this celebration and assignment of our new bishop, Bishop Cynthia Fiera Hari. We're so thankful, Bishop Harvey, to have you come and be celebrated here among us in Longview, Texas. A few notes that I want to add in my welcome here. We are thankful to have members of the Winterfield Choir joining our choir today. It was not listed in the program, but you are deeply, dearly in our hearts today. Paul Roberts is thankful for anyone who can sing and some who can't if they would like to participate in our choir. Communion today will be through a process of a piece of bread given to you. You'll come down the center aisle, receive a piece of bread. You will have a cup that you will receive from the tray. There are receptacles for the cups around the corners uh, that uh, you will see trash cans, or you can place them in the uh, holders here in the altar rail, but I recommend using the trash receptacles around the corners. You will be led from the center and return on the outside. That will allow for easy movements for communion. Kip Gilt said, be good Methodists and do not pay attention to the wording of the Lord's Prayer in the program, say it the way you know it. In other words, we will be using the traditional Lord's Prayer today uh, rather than the one printed in your bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, by your grace you have set us together in your church, whose foundation is your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant your continuing grace, we pray, to all who exercise leadership in your church, that they may with diligence and faithfulness fulfill their various ministries, and grant that we, your people, may follow them where you lead and minister faithfully in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed we may hear with joy what you say to us this day amen
The Old Testament reading from the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they could have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie. They shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. The word of our Lord. For the responsive reading, please stand with me and turn to page 800, Psalter 821, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence. Know that the Lord who made us is God. We are the Lord's. We are the people of God, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and God's steadfast all generations. Thank you. You may be seated. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, verse 1, 9 through 11. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the next hymn.
So today is your day for exercise, um, and we hear now these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, beginning verse 15. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. And a second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now you may be seated. <laughs> Bishop Cynthia Fiaro Harvey, you have been consecrated to be a shepherd and servant, and now you have been assigned as bishop of the Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, who will present Bishop Harvey for welcome to this area. I, the Texas Annual Conference lay representative of the South Central Jurisdictional Committee on Episcopacy, do certify that Bishop Cynthia Fierro Harvey was duly elected as Bishop of the United Methodist Church at the 2012 Jurisdictional Conference and has been assigned by the South Central Jurisdiction Committee on Episcopacy to the Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. I therefore present this congregation, Bishop Harvey, to be welcomed this area to which she has been assigned. The church is the community of those called by God, justified by grace, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We who are baptized into Christ's death and raised with Christ in the resurrection are living members of the body of Christ who return thanksgiving to God in ministries of worship, nurture, witness, and service. A bishop has been ordained to the ministry of the word and sacrament and to represent Christ's servanthood in a special ministry of oversight. A bishop is called to guard the faith to seek the unity, and to exercise the discipline of the whole church, and to supervise and support the church's life, work, and mission throughout the world. As a servant of the whole church, the bishop is called to preach and teach the truth of the gospel to all God's people, to lead the people in worship in the celebration of the sacrament, and in their mission of witness and service to the world, and so participate in the gospel command to make disciples of all nations. The bishop is to lead and guide all persons entrusted to her supervision. Join in the consecration of bishops, ordain deacons and elders, consecrate diaconal ministers, and commission other ministers for service in the church and to the world and provide for the ministry of the word and sacrament in the congregations committed to her care. Let the shepherd who has been called now affirm these ministries in our midst. With God's help, I promise faithfully to hear and to proclaim God's word and rightly administer the sacraments as your pastor and your servant. With God's, With God's help. We promise to join with you in the life, praise, and thanksgiving, and in the faithful use of the means of grace that God has given us. 
by the grace of Christ, I promise to be among you as a teacher of the faith, a pastor of souls, and a means to the unity of the body of Christ. By the grace of Christ, we promise to join with you in the life of the journey, in the nurturing of God's people, and in the seeking of that oneness in Christ, which is Christ gave to us. In the power of the Holy Spirit, I promise to be for you a means of reconciliation and healing, that all those who are burdened or oppressed may be made whole and able to join in the new life in Jesus Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we promise to be with you, faithful witnesses, serving justice, showing mercy, and in all things proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. Let the people say amen. Amen and amen. Now we turn to the presentation of signs of Episcopal ministry. Uh, Avonda Hawkins was not able to attend today, but Greg Morgan uh, is taking her place. Bishop Harvey, your pastoral staff, may you be upheld and sustained by Christ, the Good Shepherd, as you exercise your ministry of a shepherd among us in Christ's name. Amen. Bishop Harvey, your Bible. Proclaim fearlessly the prophetic word in the cause of justice and peace for all people. Amen. Amen. Bishop Harvey, take this water be, and be renewed in your baptism and renew us in ours. Amen. Amen. Your chalice and patent, keep us in communion with Christ in his church. In his church. Amen. 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 Bishop Harvey, your towel and basin, an invitation to be among us as one who serves. Amen. Bishop Harvey, your stole, a reminder to you and to us that you are our pastor, our preacher, our teacher. Encourage and support all baptized people in their gifts and ministries and pray for them without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Bishop Harvey, your book of discipline, guard the faith, seek the unity, exercise the discipline of the whole church, and supervise the church's life, work, and mission throughout the world. Amen. Amen. Bishop Harvey, your gavel. We welcome you to preside in our annual conference, appoint pastors and assign ministers to their ministries, and guide us in common mission in love and justice, witness and service. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, I gladly assume with you and among you, this ministry of word and sacrament. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. I'll help you. Good, good. This is right here. 
Let me start over. <laughs> Bishop Harvey, these are familiar signs of your ministry in a familiar mission field, beckoning you to a fresh, renewed ministry among the people of the Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Faithfully administer discipline, but do not forget mercy, that when the chief shepherd shall appear, you may receive the never fading crown of glory. You're welcome to accept these other vows too, if you like. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, I gladly assume with you and among you, this ministry of word, sacrament, and order, of pastoral supervision, government, and service, strengthened by the love of God and the remembrance of my consecration to the Episcopacy, I am resolved to serve faithfully and well the congregations and people of the Texas Annual Conference as bishop, pastor, and friend. Welcome, your bishop. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, Reverend Jackson, the congregation here who has already extended amazing hospitality to all of us and made sure that um, we are in a great place of worship. I think they prepared this place for us this morning uh, because I hope as you entered, you, you felt that this is, you're entering into a sacred, sacred space. I'm thankful to the, all of you for all the hospitality that we've received. It's been about Oh, I think 48, 49 days so far. Um, a bishop's life is kind of like dog years. So every year is like seven. So while it's been 49 days, it's felt like six months uh, and 49 days. But both Dean and I uh, are just blessed beyond measure and so grateful to be here. So if you will allow me uh, to begin with this word from Ephesians that also serves today as a prayer for us as we journey together. Therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord, I encourage you to live as people worthy of the call you received from God. Conduct yourselves with humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love and make an effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit with the peace that ties you together. You are one body and one Spirit, just as God also called you to one hope. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. I hope in that that you hear my deepest and greatest desire for the Texas Annual Conference and for you and for me. For this is my prayer for us, that we might conduct ourselves with all humility gentleness, and patience, and that we accept each other with love and make not just an effort, but every effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit with the peace that ties us together. As I look out, I see many familiar faces, a lot of new faces as well. 
Over the last several weeks, I've met some of you, and some of you participated in the listening sessions, which have been a great way to hear from one another, and especially for me to hear from you as we begin to unite in purpose, in mission, in vision, and our ministry together. I've heard your pain. I've absorbed it. And today I stand before you as one of you. This is my annual conference. The Texas annual conference is where I received my call, where I was nurtured, where in the last session of Disciple Bible Study in a tiny little room for, in a church that hardly had room for us, Someone identified a gift in me. Some of you have taken Disciple Bible Study. You know that last chapter. Someone identified a gift in me that I had no idea existed. And certainly in that moment, I had no idea how God would use it and use me. This annual conference is where a group of clergy sisters prayed with me and convinced me and coaxed me and all kinds of things, maybe even bribed me a little, uh, to enter into discernment and explore the Episcopacy. It's been 12 years since I've been in this conference, and much has changed. You have changed. I certainly have changed. And by the power of the Holy Spirit that uses all of us, even jurisdictional committees on episcopacy, I am here, you are here, and we are here for such a time as this. I am clear that because we share the same Texas Annual Conference DNA, no one could have been sent here who would love you as much as I do. We're siblings. We are siblings. No one could have been sent here who would love you as much as I do. And it is out of that love, the love that's gifted to us from God, the love on which everything hinges, that's why we're here. Friends, I believe that our best days, our best days are ahead. I want to say that again because I want you to hear this. I don't want you to miss it. I believe, I want you to say it with me. I believe our best days are ahead. It's different and will be even more different. But as I hear you and listen to your deepest yearnings, I have no doubt that best of all, God is with us and will guide us to a new future that's filled with promise and hope and new possibilities that we cannot even yet begin to fathom. We are indeed smaller, but hey, smaller is not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing. I'm the first to tell you, smaller is not a bad thing. We have an opportunity right now to create a renewed sense of unity, an opportunity to write a new narrative for the Texas Annual Conference. Not someone else's narrative written for us and about us, but our new narrative that paints a future filled with the sacred surprises of the Spirit. I've been dreaming, imagining, and praying for a revival. And I cannot tell you, I am so excited to be here. I am so excited to be your bishop and to share this journey with you, to explore together, to question together, to experience revival together. Now, we're not always going to agree, 
And that's okay. Because what you think matters. Who you are matters. You are God's beloved, and you matter. We're not always going to get it right either. I'm not always going to get it right. So I beg you grace. I beg for your grace and ask in advance for a quadrillion portion of that grace. Now here's the reality. Well, we have a short runway and everything seems urgent, much has happened. And much is still yet to happen, and we have to take a breath and keep our eyes squarely on Jesus, who knows us and prepares the way for us. I shared with a group the other day that there probably is a reason why our rearview mirror is smaller, much smaller, than our windshield. There's a whole lot more in front of us. A whole lot more in front of us. So I hope that you feel as I do, that we're being nudged and pushed and pulled by the Holy Spirit. And we're prime. We are prime for revival. Amazing things are beginning to happen. Spring up all around us. Faith communities led by grassroots movements of United Methodists from Cy Fair to Baytown to Mount Bellevue to Jasper and places most of us have never heard of. Chester, Texas. T. Berry. Tyler, Conroe, College Station, the 288 corridor. Faithful followers of Jesus are reclaiming their church. Now, it is no secret that I have been hard at work with every fiber of my being for the last 10 years to shape the future of the United Methodist Church. That is my call. It honors my consecration and my ordination vows. And it is who I am. I am and will continue to be an elder, a bishop in the United Methodist Church. I will never lead you anywhere other than to the United Methodist Church. But here's the invitation. Will you come with me? Will you come with me? Will you come with me so that we might be a witness in this conference and the world that proclaims that love is our most important and guiding commandment, principle, and value. It's what defines who we are. It's time for us to choose who we are and who we will be. Imagine, imagine the churches of the Texas Annual Conference making space for all of God's beloved. The open table has always been a cornerstone of our theological understanding of God's love and grace. We say this is not a Methodist table, it's not first church's table, but it's Christ's table that's set for all of you, all of you, the royal you. And we have to live that out as an outward and visible sign of God's love and grace. There's always room at the table. Sometimes we have to add chairs or leaves to the table because a united Methodist table must have room for all. It must make room for all. Diversity has always been unique to United Methodists. Now, it doesn't mean we all must agree, but it does mean we all have to love one another. 
It's the difference between uniformity and unity. I don't know about you, but I'm choosing unity over uniformity any day. I believe we can do this led by love. And this is hard work, and it's holy and sacred work that requires that we pay careful attention to those around us, extending greater love and care for each other, especially those that don't look like us, speak the same language as us, have the same skin color as us, the same education as us, think like us, agree with us, have the same zip code as us, or even a zip code at all. It's been said that John Wesley was convinced that love for all of humanity was the central teaching of the scriptures. And while he frequently preached from Romans and 1 Corinthians 13, Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, he also often preached from 1 John. He called 1 John the compendium of all the holy scriptures and described 1 John 4.19 as the sum of the whole gospel. We love God because God first loved us. We have to work to connect head and heart now more than ever. So I invite you to hear Wesley's description of the educated Christian. I've adapted a little for more inclusive and contemporary language. They are full of love of neighbor, of universal love, not confined to one sect or party, not restrained to those who agree with their opinions or in inward or in outward modes of worship or to those who are allied to them by blood or recommended by nearness of place. Neither do they love only those who love them or that are endeared to them by intimacy of acquaintance. Their love soars above all these scanty bounds, embracing neighbors and strangers, friends and enemies, yes, not only the good and the gentle, but also the forward, the evil, and the unthankful. For they love every soul that God has made, every child of whatever place or nation. And this universal disinterested love is productive of gentleness, tenderness, sweetness of humanity, courtesy, and affability. Our Methodist DNA calls us to love, to experience love, to be love in a world that does not know love. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is? Love, love casts out all Whoever does not love God does not know God, for God is? Love. We love God because God first loved us. My prayer is that we will not be limited to our point of view, but invited to enter into one another's world and see and hear each other's story that we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will be able to be in solidarity and in it find hope and peace and reconciliation, salvation, and love. Imagine with me again a conference of different races and ethnicities, cultures and perspectives united by the Holy Spirit driven by the mission of Christ and bearing the good news of an unmerited grace that changes lives and transforms communities. A place where our thoughts and actions are centered on Christ, who gave us a ministry of reconciliation that binds us together despite our differences. 
can you begin to imagine what would happen if we recommitted ourselves to strengthening our churches where the word is proclaimed, Christ is offered, and where the table is set before all who hunger and thirst for righteousness? A table where we are made one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Imagine a Texas annual conference that invites all to the table of grace and makes space and appreciates one another and doesn't create silos for only those who look, think, act, or interpret scripture the same way. My prayer is that we will not be labeled a left annual conference or a right annual conference, but instead that we be a conference whose table has room for everyone. We are a conference already that's filled with urban and suburban churches, small and small town churches, rural churches, county seat churches, all proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that's hurting and broken. So let's continue to create spaces where children, the young and the old, new Christians, mature Christians, and those exploring and looking for a place where they are safe, accepted, and received into the body, find a home, a place for all of God's beloved community. Let's be people rooted in Scripture, centered in Christ, serving in love and united in the essentials. Y'all, our best witness is to love each other as Christ first loved us. Let's give people something to talk about. Hey, look at those United Methodists. They really do love like Jesus. Let us boldly and loudly and clearly proclaim that the Texas Annual Conference is a place where all have a home, whether they are left, right, black, white, brown, Asian, gay, straight, rich, poor, young, old, Republicans, Democrats, progressive, centrist, traditionalists. I don't know about you, but that's what the kingdom of God looks like to me. So let's work, serve, and lead together. Working for our deep rootedness in connection, creating communities where disciples of Jesus Christ are developed, shaped, formed, and reformed so that the world might be transformed. It will not be easy, but it will be extraordinary holy work that will amplify the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that experiences fracturing and uncertainty every single day and needs to hear and see and experience that in him there is no darkness at all, that love is our guide. After all, don't forget, God is the God of reversal. Darkness turns to light. The dead are resurrected, the lost are found, the blind see, the sick are healed, prisoners are made free, the first are last, the hungry are fed, and I know you can add more to that list. As I come to the end of this portion of our service together, I want you to know a little bit more about me. So I made a commitment prior to my election in 2012 that continues still today. As I was discerning whether to say yes to the episcopacy, I spent some sacred time with my spiritual directors. And with their guidance, I developed a series of I believe statements that were true then and maybe even more true today. They have served as my guiding principles for the last 10 years. And I share these with you today as a renewed commitment for how I will lead the Texas Annual Conference. I am a faithful servant of God who believes in justice for all people, that God is infinite in wisdom. I believe in giving voice to the voiceless 
in caring for those living on life's edge. I believe that everyone deserves to be heard, that creativity is most often birthed in tension. I believe that God has placed people and places in my life to discover the deeper me. I believe and actually know that I'm a work in progress. I believe that when I have not been in control, God has been the most present. I believe that nothing can separate us from the love of God, that everyone deserves to be loved. I believe that grace prevails. I believe that I am not God and that God is using every experience to prepare me for today and all of my tomorrows. I believe that in sorrow I discovered the real me. I believe I was raised to be excellent in all things, not perfect, but excellent. This is my commitment to you today. Serve me well for 10 years, and I pray it'll serve me for a lifetime moving forward. So friends, let me remind you that you are God's beloved. You matter. Who you are matters. What you think matters. So allow me to end as I began. Conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love and make every effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit with the peace that ties you together. You are one body and one Spirit, just as God also called you in one hope. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. Let us be an annual conference, friends, that sets aside disagreement, harm, and pain. And today, right now, in this moment, claims, reclaims, proclaims, shouts from the mountaintop that it is a new day in the Texas Annual Conference and that we call ourselves to be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. After all, we are resilient, recommitted, reclaimed, renewed, restored, revived people of God. Amen. Amen. In prayer, O oh God, shepherd and ruler of the faithful, look with favor on your servant, Cynthia Fierro Harvey whom your church has appointed bishop and chief pastor of the Texas Annual Conference area. Grant that by word and example, she may assist those among whom she is placed so that she and the people entrusted to her care may fulfill the promises that they have made this day, grow together in unity, love, and service and at last attain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If the ushers would come forward, the offering today, we're going to participate in the First United Methodist Church of Longview's ministry. Please come forward. Let's bless our offering. Would you please pray with me? Gracious and merciful God, bless these gifts which you are about to receive, that they may be used for your purposes. Bless the giver, that we may be 
given an abundant portion of your grace, not only in what we share here, but what we are called to share with the world. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Friends, I invite you to take your hymnal and you can turn to page eight, but you're good United Methodist. You probably don't need those prompts, but I'll try to lead you through. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Won't you hear the good news? Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. 
You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the name of the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light, and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. Each time you eat this, remember me. And after supper, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks. And he said to his disciples, and he says to us still today, drink from this cup, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for you. And each time you drink this, remember me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, hear these words, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at that heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let me remind you that this is not a Methodist table. It's not First United Methodist table. But it's Christ's table that's been set for us. Bread and wine. Gifts that Jesus shared with those closest to him and shares with us this day. You received instructions on how to come, but I'm going to remind you just in case. You're going to come down the center aisle. There will be two stations for bread and two stations with a cup. We will give you a piece of bread. You take the cup. There are little receptacles at the end of the pew, or you can place, or around the corner there, or you can place them in the little slots 
on the communion rail. The rail is open if you'd like to come and have a word of prayer. If you prefer gluten-free, there are gluten-free um, communion wafers available to you, and we will serve you. All I can say now is the meal is served and supper is ready. Won't you come? This is the body of Christ. Yes. Just...
Would you join me in the prayer after communion found in your program? We thank you, gracious Lord, for giving yourself to us and for uniting us in the communion of your Holy Spirit. We bless you for raising up among us your faithful servant, Cynthia Fierro Harvey, for the ministry of a bishop in your church. We pray that she may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we, with her, may glorify you by giving ourselves to others through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. After the bishop has given us a dismissal blessing, those who are part of the program will be processing, recessing out behind her, and we will be joining you in a fellowship in the Cook Foyer. The best way to get to the Cook Foyer is to go down the incline as you make a left out of the sanctuary and then down the incline to the right, where our United Methodist women have prepared wonderful refreshments for our time of fellowship together and continued celebration of our bishop. In other words, just follow the crowd. <laughs> Won't you stand? As you go from this place today, go knowing that you are God's beloved. Go knowing that you matter, that you matter. Go and share God's love with everyone that you meet so that even the strangers will find in you a generous friend. Amen.